He didn't look like the Messiah. He looked like a baby. I, um, I, I didn't know how to defend myself, and uh, so he came to my defense. Man, I'm telling you, this was a great party, man. I mean, just about every this party was it used to be, you know what I mean? I just wanted someone to not be afraid of me. He was not afraid of me. He is kind. To me. Man, I wanted to say, someone say, look, you stupid Romans. He shouldn't be up there, man. I should, God. The day's own trouble is more than enough for the day. I don't understand why he had to die. Dead! Ooh, four days I was dead. Man, not just the kind of sick and not just the sort of sleep and I was dead. Man. I'm telling you. <laughs> he ain't dead anymore, man. He's alive and kicking. I just saw him, man. Well, here they all are to, uh, to give you a peek at Jesus from Nazareth. I let them speak and react before you. I, I hope they won't preach or, uh, or scare you or bore you. But simply respond from their own history with this storyteller, this teacher, this mystery. And so give you a look at Jesus, brand new, without, uh, without years of church language or steeples or pews. But just as they saw him, and they weighed out his claim to be more than a man, a, a name above names, restorer of blind men, healer of lame. I love, I let these, uh, these witnesses speak for a while, perhaps entertain you, make you laugh, cry, crack a smile. Perhaps find yourself as one of their kin. But now enough talk. Let's let their story begin. You want a room? I got rooms. You want a room? Come in. I got it. That's all I got. Empty rooms? You want a room? I got it. 30 bucks for a room. Pal, you want a room? Don't stand there with the door open. You're letting the flies out. Now, what do you want? A room or not? Wait, wait. What are you talking about questions? What, that's all you want to do is ask me questions? Great. Go ahead. Questions are free for now. Wait, 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 wait a minute. What are you talking about price gouging? What price gouging? Well, you think it's easy running your own motel? It's dog eat dog. Sometimes I barely make ends meet. Price gouging. I'm going through my piggy bank looking for valuable pennies. You're talking price gouging. <laughs> sure, I raise my prices during the census. Everybody around here raised their prices. What, is that against the law or something? So sue me. You're not from the government, are you? Good. Yeah, I don't understand these crazy Romans and their crazy senses, but it sure has been good for business. <laughs> Bethlehem, whee, Bethlehem, Schmetlehem. Nobody goes to Bethlehem unless somebody orders them to. Yeah, I inflated my prices a little bit. I made enough in two weeks to last me six months in the black. <laughs> Had the best rooms going for 175 a night. Had everything else going for 80 a night. Two nights I had couples sleeping in the lobby for 50 bucks a piece. I even had this one couple sleeping out back in this old tool shed I've got for a very fair price, you understand, 30 bucks. Yeah, besides, they were country bumpkins. For all they knew, it was the honeymoon suite. <laughs> and they were having some problems. I could have charged them 50, but I figured 30 bucks would be fair. I'd do them a favor because they were having problems. Yeah, problems. They were having some problems. Uh, the woman was having uh, some uh, female problems. Yeah, so she was going to have a baby, all right. I put them in. What do you mean you've heard about the baby? 
Well, you from the newspaper or something? Another one from the newspaper. Great, you're going to write me up, right? You're going to berate me. Go ahead, berate me. My family berates me. My friends berate me for all I know history. He's going to berate me. Berate me. Go ahead. You tell me when you berate me in this newspaper of yours, you tell me I'm supposed to know who that was out there in my tool shed. I got all these visitors coming there, tramping over the flower beds in the front of the motel. And that woman, I mean, that woman, she had her a very big belly, but how I'm supposed to know she was going to bingo with the baby out in my tool shed? <laughs> And the baby. Now you tell me how I'm supposed to know that this kid is going to be the Messiah. He doesn't look like the Messiah. He looks like a baby. I mean, the Messiah, he's supposed to come on the clouds or some kind of thing. The kid comes in a toolbox. Yeah. If I would have known, I would have given them a room. I could have advertised. Hey, the Messiah slept here. Yeah. Now I put that over a tool shed. You tell me, pal, who's gonna believe me, huh? Oh, welcome. Well, welcome to my shop. Please, come. Come in. I'm so sorry. I'm not really dressed for customers, am I? I, uh, I came in a bit early today to do some inventory, and uh, I'm just not really ready for customers. No, don't leave, please. Just come right in. I'll just put this on. My wife would shoot me if she knew I was greeting customers in my undershirt. Ah, uh, this is a bit better. This is off the rack, all cotton. Very nice, isn't it? Yes. And uh, if you'll just forgive me, I'll just uh, sort of dress here in front of you. I'll not wear a tie. That will have to come later today. I came in early. You see, I'm doing inventory because I'm having a sale this week. Ah, uh, in fact... I just unpacked both of these shirts. This is all linen, and this is a cotton linen blend. Very nice, don't you? Y uh, yes. Y yes, I, I, I know something about Jesus from Nazareth. Yes, I, I, I know something about Jesus from I would be happy to tell you. you. You startled me with that question. You know, there's so much meanness going around these days. I never quite know what to expect. Oh, this is very pleasant. Please do come in. Sit, sit down. May I get you something? A cup of tea or something? Fine. Oh, such a pleasant surprise. Um... Well, I, I can't tell you as many things about Jesus as very many people can, his, his followers. Uh, I just knew him for a short time, actually, when we were boys. I was, uh, I was 10 years old at the time. It was a very special time for me, though. Uh, well, suppose I should tell you something about myself, eh? If my uh, sentiments about Jesus are going to make any kind of sense to you. Ah... <laughs> uh, I, I was an only child, and um, my, uh, my father was killed when I was just a little boy. I was about two at the time, I think. I never knew him, really. My mother uh, never bothered to remarry. We just lived with relatives. When one relative got tired of us, we would move along to another. Uh, that usually took about six months. My mother was a very nervous woman, tended to drive everyone a bit crazy. She... Uh, was quite protective of me as well. <laughs> she always told me that I was all she had left in the world, and she certainly treated me that way. Never let me go outside. Never let me play with the other boys in the village. I was not to get hurt, like my father. I was to be safe. <laughs> well, suffice it to say that the, um, the kindest thing that I was ever called by the other boys in the village was... Uh, was sissy. Uh, anyway, about Jesus. Um, I was almost 11 years old. I was 10 and a half, I suppose. My mother decided that it was time for us to move along again to another village, another relative. We went to live with my aunt and uncle this time, who lived just outside of a little village called Nazareth. Uh, we arrived during the school holiday, but... Uh, as usually happened, the word seemed to spread quite quickly about the new boy in town. So on my first day of synagogue school in the new village, 
the boys were all ready for me. I, uh, I got the silent treatment that day during school. No one said a word to me, which was not unusual. <laughs> but uh, after school that day, the largest boy in the school, I uh, suppose he would be the bully, he and several of his little friends decided to give me a welcoming committee. And uh, they followed me home, walked behind me as we were walking through the village, didn't say a word to me. I knew they were there, however. <laughs> but when we got out away from the village, where there were no houses and no adults to see these boys, they very quickly formed a circle around me, you see. And they started shoving me back and forth across the circle to one another calling me all kinds of names that I really don't care to repeat right now. I understand, I, I tried, I tried to defend myself, you know. I, I held my hands up like I thought I was supposed to do. I didn't know how to do that. And when I held my hands up, well, the bully um, started slapping my face quite hard. And I started crying, which was not the right thing to do, because that was like some sort of signal, you know. And the other boys started slapping me quite a bit as well. I, I didn't know what to do, you know. I, I started to run from these boys. And when I did that, the bully tripped me and I fell down on the ground. And when I tried to get up off of the, the ground, he kicked me in the stomach again. And I couldn't breathe. And I was on the ground and I couldn't breathe. And this bully sat on top of me and he put his knees on my arms so I couldn't even move my arms. And he started taking handfuls of dirt and shoving them in my mouth, screaming at me. What's the matter, little faggot? What's the matter, faggot? Faggot. The other boys were screaming like a pack of animals. Well, then all of a sudden it got very quiet out there, you know. I felt this bully being pulled off of me. I had my eyes shut through all of this. I opened my eyes hoping to see a very large adult. <laughs> it was just a boy. I, I, I don't know where he came from. He wasn't with the other boys. But when I looked up, this boy was much smaller than the bully too. He had the bully's hands and he was pulling this bully up off of me, you know. He turned the bully around to face him. He said, if you want to pick on someone, man, you pick on me. And the bully, he reared back very hard, you know, and he struck the boy very hard in his nose. His, his nose just started gushing blood all over his shirt and everything, you know. From, from where I was on the ground, I could see this boy's hands. They, they were clinching very, very tightly, you know. But he didn't do anything. He just stood there. Well, the bully certainly didn't know what to do about that either. Now he sort of walked off mumbling to himself. His friends all followed him. The, the boy, he looked down at me, you know, he gave me a hand up. Sort of looked around and he, he started laughing. He said, uh, said, we were almost done for, weren't we? You know, he told me his name then, Jesus. I, I didn't know what to say. I, I, I said, 
I thank, thank you for coming to my defense, Jesus. And he just sort of shrugged. He said, ah, that's what I'm here for. We, we sure got to be good friends, Jesus and I. You know, he took me home. He introduced me to all of his brothers. I, I don't know how they did it, but somehow or another, he and his brothers convinced their mom to convince my mom that, uh, that they were safe for me to play with. <laughs> if she only knew. <laughs> we used to wrestle every afternoon at their house after school. Their father would referee for us. And uh, well, Jesus, uh, well, he, he taught me all kinds of things. Uh, taught me how to play mumbly peg with a knife, you know, the way you do. <laughs> Nearly cut my foot off one day. And uh, he taught me how to fish. Uh, well, he, he taught me how to be a boy, I guess. Uh, my mother had already taught me all about clothes. So now my wife and I run this little shop here. <laughs> and I like to fish. Well, anyway. After about six months in Nazareth, my mother decided that it was time for us to move along again to another, another village, another relative. I've never seen Jesus again. I'll not forget him, though. He was my friend. Ah, uh, shut up, man. The guy will talk your ear off. You know what I mean? What, what, what? You guys want to hear something about Jesus here or something? What, you guys got some kind of Jesus convention going here or something? You guys want to hear something about Jesus? All right, I'll tell you something about Jesus short and sweet. Okay, how about like this? How about like, uh, okay, maybe like that last supper there. Did you guys hear about that last supper there that Jesus had with his 12 buddies here? You with me on that? You hear about that thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, right. Well, I wasn't invited to that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I couldn't have gone anyway, right? It's a holiday. I usually, like, kind of hang out with my buds on the holiday, you know? Oh, let me tell you, though, man, I didn't go to the last supper. Oh, whoa, whoa, but I sure did go to the second to last supper. Oh, man. Oh, that was one great party. See, what happened was this. There's a bunch of us, we kind of, like, uh, well, we come into town, right, in Jerusalem, you know, for the holiday day, the Passover thing. So we all kind of like, you know, hanging out together in Jerusalem for the Passover, right? And so like we hear that Jesus and his little buddies there, they all coming into town for the Passover, right? So we all get together, we figure, hey, great, man, let's go out and meet him, you know? <laughs> Let me tell you, man, a jillion other people had the exact same idea, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we got this big parade, right? Everybody's going crazy, man. These palm branches, all this stuff, man. Here comes Jesus, man. He's riding right down the middle of all these people, man, on this stupid little donkey, man. <laughs> I mean, just as noble as can be, man. It was great. So anyway, the first thing he does, right? He, I mean, he and his buddies, they go into town, you know, and Jesus goes over to, to the, uh, to the uh, what they call that thing there. Here, hold up for me, huh? Yeah, he goes over to that big church house in, the, in, in Drew, the, the, the temple, that's what they call it, right? And, like, goes over to the temple, you know, he, like, gives all the religious stuff shirts or what for for a couple of three days, man. <laughs> it was great, man. I mean, they was, like, squirming supreme. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. So, anyway. Oh, and this was great, man. You're going to love this, pal. This was great. You know how they got, you know, like, they got in Jerusalem, you know, they got them little, um, like, them souvenir stands set up, you know, for the holiday. You know, they're, like, selling pigeons, you know, and hamsters and stuff like that, you know. You know, you know like, they got Jerusalem, you know, they, like, turn it over. It's, like, snowing on Jerusalem, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, man. So, Jesus, man, he goes in there. He, like, messes up all these souvenir stands, all that stuff. Everybody starts throwing punches. Everything is great, man. I decked this guy, man. It was great. So, anyway. So, we, like, hanging out, I don't know, two, three days, something like that in Jerusalem. So we all get together, right? And we figure we're going to give them like a little, um, like a little surprise party thing, right? You know, like a little potluck thing out there in the suburbs, out there in Bethany. So we figured, yeah, we'll do it out there at Simon's house because he's got this real big living room, right? You know who I'm talking about, right, honey? Simon, you know, the leper right there in Bethany? Yeah, yeah, well, right. Used to be a leper, that is. As <laughs> a matter of fact, just about everybody at this party was a used to be, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Yeah, who else we got? Okay, we got Simon at this thing. We got Bart, he used to be blind. Um, who else we got? Oh, we got this other guy, this party man. He used to be a cripple. Oh, man. We got this other guy, this party man. He used to be like crazy. You know what I'm talking about? I <laughs> mean, like keep him away from the dip. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And uh, who else we got there? We got. Uh, uh, we got Mary, she used to be a hooker, right? And uh, 
And then we got Lazarus, man. He used to be dead in the doornail, man. <laughs> oh, whoa. <laughs> and uh, oh, who, oh, his two old mate sisters came through. They're kind of a drag. Martha and uh, what's the name of the other one? And then we got Jesus, right? And then we got his 12 little buddies here, right? Then we got me, right, who, like, I used to not be able to talk, right? <laughs> As you can tell, man, I can do it now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is a great party, man. Lots to eat. Everybody's cutting up. It gets really crazy. Like, about, oh, I don't know, 11 o'clock, midnight, man. This thing gets really crazy, man. Everybody starts, like, telling jokes and everything. Like, Jesus, man. He stands up on this chair. He tells this stupid knock-knock joke, man. I mean, this thing was stupid. It went, okay, I had to go. It was like, uh... Oh, I know. It went like, knock, knock. Who's there? Israel. Israel who? Israel, nice to meet you. I mean, <laughs> stupid joke, man. Everybody starts hollering at him. Hey, Jesus, off the chair, man. No more jokes. Oh, man, drive you crazy. Oh, let me tell you, though, man. Everybody starts raising on Jesus after that, right? Like Bart, right? He tells this thing on Jesus, like how Jesus makes him see and everything. You know, this big thing, you know, mud pies on the eyes, all this stuff is nuts, man. So anyway, I stand up, right, to do this speech thing, you know, to prove like, like I can talk and everything, you know? So I do this speech, you know, about my dog. And they applaud, you know, for my speech and everything, you know? So I'm like bow and everything, you know, with the speech. Why they applauding for me, man? Lazarus, he stands up, he goes, oh, yeah? You think that's something? Try being dead for four days, buddy. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, oh, listen to this, though, man. You're going to love this, honey. Listen, this is great, man. This is great. You're going to love this, pal. Okay, Mary, man. Mary does the best thing. This is great. Mary, first off thing she does, she, like, tells everybody, like, how good it is not to be a hooker no more, right? <laughs> yeah, well, right. Yeah. Okay. And then, man, she gets this big old honking bottle of perfume, right? I mean, she pours it all over Jesus, man. Oh, <laughs> whoa, get back. I mean, it smells great, man. Let me tell you. Oh, Jesus' 12 buddies, they get, like, really ticked off about the perfume, you know? He calms them all down. He says, hey, it's a good thing she did that, pals, because that way I can smell good for my funeral. <laughs> then he tells everybody he's going to get killed. But he says, hey, don't worry about it, man. I'm going to come back alive in a couple of three days. Eh. That made sense to me, yeah, especially the Lazarus, you know what I'm <laughs> Yeah, right. So anyway, man, I mean, after he, like, talks about getting the ax, right, I mean, the party, it breaks up like that, man. I mean, try it sometime, man. You go to a party, you're bored, tell everybody you're going to get killed. I mean, it's amazing, man. Everybody goes home. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, sure enough, man, a couple of days later, he goes out, he gets himself axed, like he said, right? I don't know, a couple of days later, no, it was like three days later, right? He comes back alive again, like you said. Eh, that didn't surprise me. Seemed like the sort of thing God would do. That's who he was, you know. So anyway, he hangs around for like, I don't know, a few days, right? And then, man, he takes off on this honking cloud, man. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's great, man. Yeah, but right before he takes off on the cloud thing, right, he says, hey, don't worry about it, guys. He says, I'm coming back. He says, in the meantime, why don't you, like, go around and, like, kind of find some other folks to kind of get in on this thing, you know? So I figured, eh, why not, you know? I can talk now and everything, you know? <laughs> I might as well, like, uh, like, go around and find some other folks to kind of be used to be, you know? So, uh, so that's what I'm doing here tonight. So, like, uh, how am I doing? Any takers? <laughs> Story! You want to hear a story? I'll tell you a story. I'll tell you a story about the being a dead. Hey, four days I was dead. Hey, not just the kind of sick, not just the sort of asleep, I was a dead. Hey, two weeks I was sick before the four days I was a dead. It started right here. A little pain in my gallbladder. Yeah, my two old mother sisters, Mary and Martha, they called for Jesus to come and do some stuff for me. He didn't come. They get so upset with Jesus. They're always upset with Jesus. They're always inviting him to our house for dinner. He always comes late. Yeah, they say, Jesus, you're going to be a late for your own funeral, boy. <laughs> I don't know about that, but he sure was a late for mine. <laughs> oh, me. I 
I get, the sicker I get, the sicker. Next thing I know, I fall asleep. Bam! I'm a dead. Huh? Oh, these two fellas, they come and they put all these uh, spices on top. Uh, you know, I was uh, like a pizza, you know. Yeah. And these fellas, they come and they wrap me up in this uh, big bed sheet. And they say this a funeral of me. I like what they said at the funeral. I didn't like the music, but I like what they said at the funeral. I was uh, just getting used to being a dad, about the four days. I hear this, I hear this, Lazarus, come out of there. I think, who? That sounds familiar, huh? I try to get up, I can't get up. Well, you know what it's like to have a 50 pounds of pizza spices on your stomach. Oh, well, yeah. But these two fellas, they come inside the cave and they unwrap this cloth. I look around the cave, there's all these dead people in the cave. There's my Uncle Antonio, my Aunt Marie. I'm thinking to myself, Ooh, it's a good thing he just called my name, huh? Otherwise, all these other people let it be alive again. My Uncle Antonio, he weighs about the 350 pounds. He's about the 60 feet tall. I owed him $500 when he died. <laughs> He's better off dead, yeah. So I walk out the cave. There's all these people outside the cave. There's Mary, there's Martha, there's Jesus. Jesus is a little bit shorter than me, yeah. Hey, hey, Jesus. He comes up to me, he gives me this big hug. He says, welcome back, Lazarus. I said, thank you, where was I? He says, you was a dead man. I said, I know I was a dead, Jesus. What happened? He said, I made you alive again. I said, thank you, Jesus. He says, hey, he's nothing. Let's go have some supper, huh? You go away from me. Go away from me. I know you are Jesus. I know you are Jesus, your holy man, huh? Your holy man. Don't you come up here by me. No. No. no! no, don't, don't you come up here by me! me. No. 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 no! 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 Don't come up here! Don't come up My name is Legion. Legion. Very, 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 very many, but very, very many. No, you don't, don't come, come up here. here. No, no, you don't. don't. No, don't, don't come up here by, by me. No, no, no don't. don't. You send me to, to those pigs over there. Send me to pigs over there, but don't come up here. No, go away from me. Don't. Don't. No. no. This is the way I was. You, 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 you don't, you don't know the, the, what it's like. Do you? 
don't know what it's like. You live in caves, and that's where they put dead people in caves, and you live in caves, and people run away f from you, and they scream things when they see you, and you live in caves, and you're full of bad things, and nobody touch you. They're afraid they might get what you got. You don't know what that's like, do you? It's not good. I, I just wanted someone to not be afraid of me. He is not afraid of me. Touch me on the hand, see. You made the bad things go away. And now I can breathe again. And that's good. He told me if I wanted to, if, if I wanted to, I could sing songs if I wanted to. I could sing things too, he told me. Shall I find joy, oh heavens? song oh yeah you bet Mo <laughs> caught me singing huh <laughs> you want a box yeah I got boxes I got look here look here you ain't gonna believe this man these are strong boxes oh I know they look like trash man but a good box look at it you ain't gonna believe this man this box goes on top of this box right here man they go together you know what down there in the city, man, you're gonna pay 50 bucks a piece for both these boxes. Up here, both these together, they fit together, 60 bucks for a pair of them. That's a good deal, man. Come on, six, 50 bucks. How about it? Come on, man, I gotta pay the rent. How about it? 50. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Boy Rabbit. Oh, you looking for Bud Rabbit's the revolutionary, are you? Hey, he ain't here. He dead. He died about five years ago. Hey, all you got here is uh, Bud Rabbit's the box man. You, uh, you want to talk to him? Oh, I ain't much of a box man, I'll admit it, man. I'm learning. I was as good with this knife right here carving these boxes as I used to be with my old uh, hobby. I wouldn't worry about the rent, man. I'd be rich. <laughs> hey, you might say my old hobby was... Uh, Carbon. Romans. 
You Roman? Just wondering. Hey, you want to hear about Jesus, don't you, pal? Come on, man, admit it. It's a small town, man. You got into town last night at 6 o'clock. I know where you stayed, and I know what you had for dinner. You don't like fish, do you? Admit it, man. It's a small town you've been asking about me. Ad admit it, pal. Now, you sit down right there. Sit down. I'm just kidding you, man. Yeah, I'll tell you about it. I need a little break anyway. Hot day, ain't it? Let's see, where to start? Killing Romans. That's a good place to start, ain't it? Yeah, they caught me eventually, the Gentile boys did. But this surprised me. I figured they would. Had me having a holding cell. They're going to kill me first thing in the morning, you know? And, uh... What do you mean, scared of dying? <laughs> you see this knife right here, pal? I lost count at about 30 Gentiles with this knife. I was good at it, see? I knew where to stick it, kill them quick. You make any noise, you cover their little Gentile mouths, and you slit their little Gentile throats, man. I was a machine, man. I didn't know what I was doing. After a while, you do it. You know, you look for a crowd, you look for cover, you see a Gentile, you stick it, right? Oh, come on, man. Don't mess with me. What do you mean, how did I know if they were Gentiles? <laughs> All the Gentiles look alike, man. You know that. You can't tell them apart, man. I knew they were Gentile. <laughs> anyway, they got me in a hole and cell. They're going to kill me first thing in the morning, right? About, uh, I don't know, midnight. I start hearing this, uh, this chant kind of thing, right? Give us Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. I'm thinking, great, man. Lynch mob. <laughs> it goes on a little while. I don't know, two hours, three hours later, it quits, right? A little bit after that, this... Uh, this Roman soldier, he's on his little Roman soldier suit, you know. He comes, he unlocks my cell door, he shoves me out the door. He says, get out of here, Jew pig. Somebody took your place, man. I got out of there, man. <laughs> I went to where I hid my knife, you know, right before they called me. Be prepared. It's my motto. Besides, it's, it's a holiday weekend, you know, a lot of Jews in town for the holiday. And when the Jews show up, that's when the Roman soldiers show up, you know. Oh, they got to keep us in line, man. We're bad. Oh, yeah. We're going to do something real bad to them. Bunch of Romans around, big crowd. That's a great time to stick a Gentile, man. So as I thought I'd catch a look at the sucker they caught in my spot, you know. Yeah, I, mean, I got there a little bit late for the fun and games. You ever been one of them, uh, one of them lashings, man? That's a shame, man. It's a lot of fun. You within 20 feet of the guy that lashing, man, you get blood in your mouth, man. It's flying. I got there too late for that point, though, see? By the time I got there, they got this guy, this little scrawny Jew. He got him up on a box, right? He's butt naked, and they already beat him. His back looked like a piece of, like a piece of hamburger meat, man. He couldn't stand up too good. He keeps falling off the box. So this sergeant, he walks up to this Jew boy, and he gets his... Uh, these sticker things, these briar things, he crams them in this Jew's face. And he's got this blindfold, he wraps it around the boy's head. And he starts slapping him around, trying to get him ticked off, right? The Jew wasn't talking. So the sergeant, he got about five or six of his little men out there in a line, and they all got a stack of rocks by him. They get about 30 yards away from the Jew, and they start taking turns pelting the Jew with rocks. Every time one of them hits the Jew, the sergeant gets up in his face. He goes, hey, boy, who threw the rock, boy? Come on, tell me, who threw the rock? Come on, you stupid little Jew. We hear you some sort of magic man now. Come on, man, sure you know his name. What's his name, boy? Talk. And the Jew wasn't talking. So the sergeant gets real tired of the Jew not talking. The Gentile, he's got this billy club kind of thing. He gets right up in the guy's face and he starts pounding him in the back with his billy club. Come on, you stupid little Jew. Now, you too good to talk to a Gentile, huh? Is that it, boy? You too good to talk to me. Talk to me, you stupid Jew. Don't get smart, boy. Don't get smart. I can send you somewhere. And Jew, get out of here, talk. Come on. 
Gentile keeps pounding his Jew with this stick. I about had it, man. I got my hand on my knife. I'm standing on the outside of the crowd. I start shoving my way to the crowd, man. I'm gonna rip that fat Gentile's gut open. I get from here to that stool, and that sergeant wasn't even looking at me, man. I start pulling my knife out. This Jew falls over on his face toward me. The sergeant, he reaches down there to yank the Jew's head up, and he pulls a blindfold right off that boy's face, and he's looking right at me. Like, like he's saying, it's gonna be all right, man. You just take it easy, it's gonna be all right. I pull my hand away from my knife. I just stand there watching this guy, right? The sergeant keeps pounding in. And the guy's blinking his eyes to get the blood out of his eyes, man. Every time he's blinking his eyes, he opens, man. He looks right at me, man. I've never seen nothing like this, too. A little while, the sergeant gets tired of beating him, right? So he puts his cross piece on his back and he starts marching him through the town, man. The street's lined with people, man. I see 10-year-old Jew boys throwing rocks at this Jew. He's one of theirs and they're throwing rocks at him. They get out there at the edge of town. The Gentiles, they lash him up, right? They put the nails in there. And they drop the whole thing into the socket. I did say hardly nothing the whole time, man. He let him do it to him. He's up there after a while, you know. He's jerking his head back like they do to try to breathe. And he wasn't saying nothing. And I'm standing on the outside of the crowd, man, watching this Jew. And then after a little while, man, he starts mumbling under his breath. And I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, Jew. All right, pal, now you're doing it. Cuss him Gentiles out, man. Now you're doing it. Tell him, boy, cuss him out. Tell him damn Gentiles they're gonna go to hell, man. Tell him, boy, go to hell, you damn Gentiles. Cuss him, boy, cuss him. That's it, cuss him. I start shoving my way through the crowd, man, and here cussing him Gentiles, man. The boy keeps pulling his head back. He keeps going, father. For once in my life, man, I wanted to do something right. I wanted to say, look, pal, look, just don't die, all right? Now, I'm going to get you down from there, man. Don't die on me. I'm going to get you down from there. Come on, you stupid Gentiles. Look, look, there's a mistake going on here, man. There's a mistake going on here. Don't you understand that, man? For the love of God, man, you got the wrong man up there. I should be up there. I didn't mean to get carried away like this, man. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't tell this story too much around here anymore, you know? Uh, around here's already heard it. Yeah, so anyway, uh, make a long story a little shorter. Uh, uh, five years ago, Peter, the fisherman, you know him? He's crazy, ain't he? He looks me up, right? He says, hey, pal, you're Barabbas, ain't you? I said, yeah, pal, what about it? He says, that that Jew, Jesus, he took your place, didn't he? I said, yeah, man, what about it? He says, I know, man, he, uh, he took mine too. <laughs> well, he told me what that meant, right? <laughs> he told me all kind of stuff. Well, the joker makes me a Christian, all right? <laughs> so now I use this thing, I carve up boxes, huh? <laughs> Every once in a while, I... Uh, Go have lunch with a Gentile, you know? <laughs>
Oh, you heard. Yeah, well, it's a small town. All right, so my best friend in the fellowship's a Roman guard. All right. You want a box, pal? Take it. Hey, it's yours. It goes with a story. Hey, did you hear this one down there? Shout for joy, oh heavens. <laughs> it's a good one, ain't it? I made it up. Rejoice, O oh worth, and burst into song, O oh mountain. Would you guys please quit singing that song? Look, I have a headache. I would appreciate it if you just quit singing the song. I'm sick of that song. Quit it, please. Thank you very much. Look, fellas. What are we doing here? What are we doing here, guys? We're sitting around in the dark singing worn out songs. It's over with, guys. It's over. What are you guys looking at me like that for? It. Come on, Andrew, cut it, man. Just cut it. I'm sick of hearing that from you. For three days, that's all I've heard. Cut it. He's dead. He's dead, Andrew. You got that? And it doesn't matter now what he said. He's... Look, Andrew, I don't care if he said he was going to drink wine with us. I don't care if he said he's going to eat a steak dinner with us, man. It's not happening. He's dead. You got that? Right. Dead. It doesn't matter now what he said. Guys, we can sit around in this room, we can wait, we can sing songs. I mean, we can wait till this wine turns to vinegar, man. It's not happening, Andrew. You don't drink wine with a dead man. It's not happening. He's not coming back. Guys, why don't we just admit it? It's over with. I mean, why don't we drink the wine? Please get some kind of use out of it. Because he's not coming back. He's not coming back. I wish to God he was, Andrew. I wish he was here. But this isn't some sort of fairy tale, man, where the good guy wins in the end. This is real life, man. The good guy's dead. I mean, even if it was possible, guys, he wouldn't have anything to do with us. We couldn't even stand around and watch him die, man. Wherever he is, Andrew, he's written us off. You can bet on that. It's over, guys. Why don't we just go home, huh? I think we all had us enough trouble to last a lifetime. I just don't think I can take any more trouble. Yeah, Andrew, I remember when he said that. Let the day's own trouble be enough for the day. Remember that, Peter? Remember it like it's yesterday, man. Remember, we've been walking all day and you were really hungry, you remember? You kept dry griping to Jesus about what we're going to have for dinner. He's laughing at you like he always did. He would never tell you. Kept saying it's going to be a surprise. Finally, you got so mad at him, man. You got right up in his face. You remember that? <laughs> he kept going, come on, Jesus. I'm not kidding, man. What are we having for dinner? 
came in laughing. I remember you got so mad, Peter, you turned around, you just stomped off. He came up behind you and he tackled you. Remember that? You guys are wrestling around on the ground, and everything, he started tickling you. And then you started laughing. After a while, when you guys quit laughing, you just said, all right, then, what are we having for breakfast tomorrow? Well, he didn't miss a beat. He said, oh, Peter, won't you just let the day's own trouble be enough for the day? trouble was more than enough for the day. I don't understand why I had to die. He didn't do anything. It's not fair. You hear me, God? It's not fair. Look, guys, I'm sorry I got mad at you, okay? I'm sorry, Andrew. I, I just don't know what to do. He was the only guy that ever picked me for anything. I really miss him today. I wish he'd come back and make me laugh. So, look, I'm going to go for a little walk, okay? I'm okay, Andrew, all right? I'm, don't follow me, Peter. I just need to be alone for a little bit, okay? I'm okay. I'm so sorry I got mad at you guys. I just saw Jesus, man. I was walking down the road. I just... I ain't making this up, Thomas. Come on, man. I ain't smart enough to make this up. Come here. I'll tell you what happened, man. Look, okay. I'm, he, I, I just... Okay, okay, Thomas. Okay, okay. I'm calm. I'm calm. Okay, okay. Okay. We were at the house, right? You know, after you go... Went to go for your walk, you know, go pout and everything. And so... So we're trying to figure out what to do, right? So Barry and a bunch of the other guys, they decided they're going to go to the graveyard, you know, and do stuff, flowers or something at the graveyard. They came running back with some kind of weirdo story, Thomas. John and I, man, we left everybody at the house. We told them to shut the doors, turn off the lights, man. John and I, we started running down the road to the graveyard. Thomas, I was ahead of John, man. He's going to tell you different. It ain't true, man. I'm quicker than he is. You know that, don't you? All right. I'm 10 yards ahead of John, man. I'm hauling. This guy starts running down the road beside me, man. He, like, comes out of nowhere. He's running down the road. He keeps tugging at my sleeve, trying to stop me, right? He keeps going, hey, pal, where are you going, man? What's the trouble? I said, I'm looking for a dead friend of mine, man. That's the trouble, and I ain't got time to mess with you. Now bug out of here, man. I told him, man. I get, like, 10 yards ahead of this guy. <laughs> this guy, man, he comes up behind me. <laughs> 
tickles me, man. I'm on the ground, like, trying to punch him off of me, right? I keep going, get out of here, man. Quit giving me trouble. Quit giving me trouble. He goes, hey, pal, won't you just let the day's own trouble be enough for the... <laughs> I said, where'd you hear that, man? He goes, hey, Peter, it's me, surprise! <laughs> Thomas, he ain't even mad at us, man. He still likes us. <laughs> man, he's alive and kicking, man. What are we going to do now, man? It's going to be great, man. It's just like the old days. He's alive and kicking. Thomas, I just saw him, man. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And the Word became flesh and lived for a while among us. And we've seen His glory. The glory as of the one and the only Son of the Father, full of grace, full of truth. And through Him, all things were made. And without Him, nothing was made that has been made. And in Him was life. And that life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome.